Good morning. I want to thank you for joining me once again as we continue our study in the book of Acts. I want to remind you about a few things before we get started. Uh, one is that we are meeting on campus for small groups at 9 o'clock. Church is at 10 with the worship service. It's just a great time as we meet together. Also, usually on Wednesday night, we have our family night at 630. But this week, we are not meeting because the Calhoun County Schools are on uh, fall break this week. So we don't have Wednesday night this week. We just want to encourage you um, to come, small group if you can, at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning and then 10 o'clock for worship. We'll pray, then we'll dive into this stuff, study in the book of Acts here. So, Father God, I just want to thank you for the day. I want to thank you for all you've given us. I just want to thank you for who you are. God, I pray as we go, we will be bold. As we see the apostles are bold in this study, God, we would stand for what you have for us, what you want us to do. God, we just give you honor and glory when we pray. Amen. Um, we're going to be today in the book of Acts. We're going to be in chapter 5. Um, I just want to, to, to back up a little bit and, and what's going on, and I want to read a quote to you. Um, I want to read a quote first. It is about Vance uh, Pittman, and it says, I want to invest my life in something that's going to outlive me. I want to invest my life in something that was that's going to outlive me. So what we see here with, with the apostles, what they're doing, they're, they're investing in something that's going to outlive them as we are still studying and we're still learning from them today. So we're going to be in chapter 5 of Acts. But just to back up a little bit, if you don't go pretty much verse by verse in Acts, you've got to back up a little bit and cover kind of what you've missed. So I want to kind of go from where Bray was on last week to where we were picking up in Acts chapter 5, um, verse 25 this, this morning. So we see them, we see them out, you know, the Holy Spirit has come down. And we see in chapter 3 that they're healing people. Peter is speaking. Um, Peter and John are out, out preaching um, in, in, in public. And all of a sudden they get brought in. They get arrested, when um, they go before them, and they, and they start just sharing with the Sanhedrin what's going on. And then I want to read a verse to you. It's Acts 4.13. It says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. So they recognized that Peter and John had been with Jesus. The end of that verse is what I want my life to be. I want people to recognize that I have been with Jesus. I want them to be able to know that I spent time with Jesus, that I am I am with him, I walk with him. You know, what comes out of me, out of my mouth, out of my you know, actions, out of my thoughts. I have been with Jesus, not kind of whatever Scott wants, but what Jesus would have me to do. So they, they tell these things and then they, they meet together and they get sent out and they go back home. Then they prayed that God would send them, give them boldness to speak even more. They started meeting together. They had everything in common. Then we have the story of Ananias and Sapphira, who, who lied to the Holy Spirit. You know, we know what happened to them. Then they start doing all these many, it says, my Bible says, many signs and wonders were done. They just started healing people. They started doing all these things happening. And then we get to them, they get arrested again. And then they get freed again. And then we pick up their... In verse 25, it's a, it's a lot of verses, it's 25 through 42, but I want to read them, and then we'll kind of go over them a little bit. Starting in verse 25 of Acts chapter 5. And someone came and told them, look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, and but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, and set them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in the name in this name, yet you have filled yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so it is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do to these men. For before these days, Thaddeus rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. 
he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census, drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For this plan, for if for if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they called in the apostles, they beat him and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they left in the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from the house to, and from house to house, they would cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. All right, so what we see here, we started back in chapter 5 of Acts here, starting in verse 25. We see them going out and they're preaching and they get brought in. I want to read 25 through 28 to you again so we can talk about those. Someone came and reported to them, look, reported to them being the council, being Sanhedrin. Look, the men you put in jail are standing in a temple complex and teaching the people. Then the commander went with the temple police and brought them without force because they were afraid of the people might stone them. After they brought them in, they had them stand before the Sanhedrin and the high priest asked, didn't we strictly order you not to teach in his name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to bring this man's blood on us. So they go out, somebody, somebody, we don't know who, this an anonymous person reported that they were out preaching. Peter and John were out preaching again. These guys that y'all arrested are now back in preaching again. So, you know, he says that kind of angered them. So they sent out some temple guards to go get them. But also now remember, as we look back at this, they are doing great and mighty wonders and signs. And people are loving them. Remember, Jesus has, Jesus has been killed. We're going to talk about this in a second. You know, he's already raised. He's already went forth. The Holy Spirit's already come. So at this point in time, the, the, the apostles are doing these great things in the name of the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus was when he was when he was alive, you know, earthly alive. And we see the people followed him and loved him because of what kind of what he was giving them. They're doing the same thing here with the apostles. They're, they're loving what they're getting out of them. So the people love them. So the guards don't go and just drag them out of the, you know, into the courts because they think they may be stoned, they may be killed in the process of this. They're, they're not, they're not dumb. They're realizing what's happening. They're, they're going to bring them in kind of quietly without a big fanfare. You know, there was no, you know, news media filming it and all none, none of this kind of stuff going on. It was just they brought them in and they stood before the Sanhedrin. And the high priest asked them, "Didn't we tell you not to not to preach?" In the name of Jesus, didn't we just didn't we just tell you that don't do this? And now you're doing it, and not only are you doing it, you're filling the whole city with it, and you're gonna bring the blood of Jesus on us. So they are not happy. They're they're like, you know, what are you doing? We told you not to preach, and yet here you are. Here you are. And it wasn't that they didn't like the preaching, which they did and remember now that the Sanhedrin and the Jewish people did not believe Jesus was who he said he was. So they do. They think he was, you know, they think he was a he was a blasphemer. Remember, they, they had him crucified. So they don't. They're not a big fan of Jesus. But what they what they're really worried about here is losing power. They're worried that, that they might lose their power. They feel their power is slipping away from them as the people are loving the apostles, loving what they're doing. They're getting nervous. So this is not so much the religious as it was a power play by the Sanhedrin. They wanted the apostles out of the way. And so they, they stand there and they, they bring them in. And then we see in uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 29, um, we, see, we see this through 32. It says, But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. So once again, Peter's the speaker. Now remember, Peter, when Jesus was alive, he, he was always kind of the first one to speak. He was always the first one to say something. Um, you know, he, and usually it was something dumb. Usually it was something that didn't go with what was being done. You know, he, he remember how he jumped out of the boat, walked on water, then he fell in. You know, we see him cutting an ear off, you know, off the soldier. We see him saying things, you know, I don't know Jesus. And Jesus one time called him Satan. He said, get behind me. You know, Peter just speaks without really thinking. But here he says some great things. He says, 
We must obey God rather than men. We have to do what God's told us to do. We have to stand on what God has given us. What, what, what we now have to stand on is what the Word of God says. A um, little, little sidebar here on this. It doesn't really matter what I think or what you think or what the government thinks or what Facebook thinks or what anybody else thinks. What matters is what's in the Word of God. So often we take what's in here and then we add a little bit more to it to what fits what we want it to say and then we stand on that. We're to stand on only what the Word of God says. Not on what the Word of God says plus what I think would make it even better. It's what the Word of God says. So he says we must obey God rather than men to obey God. They were, they were commissioned. They were told their job was to go and preach the gospel. And that's what they're doing. And then... And then Right here, he comes and he starts doing it. So the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you murdered by hanging him on a tree. And by hanging him on a tree, that was that was what they were saying, you know, kind of of, of crucifixion was, was a sign at this time of God's judgment on people. Um, that he was cursing them. And we see that that's not what happened. And Jesus and it says that God raised them from the dead. And he said to give repentance and forgiveness of sins. Now, we know that Jesus did that when he was alive. He was tell people, well, your sins have been forgiven. But he also told me, he said, well, get up and walk. He would tell them to walk. He would, he would heal their blindness. Um, you know, he would take the, the, the demons out of them. And those things were all great, but, you know, those outside things could be seen. The repentance couldn't be seen because it, it was not a physical activity, per se, as lame walking or blind seeing. So he would do those things to prove that he was who he said he was. And he's saying here, he, he's getting repentance and he's getting forgiveness of sins. And they are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also is. The, the Holy Spirit was there as well. He also, like Peter and John, saw these things. And now he's given to those who follow Jesus. When we follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes upon us at that time. There's not another um, another baptism when we get the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes upon us when we accept Jesus. And he leads us. He guides us. He, he helps us. He shows us. He helps us with the Word of God. He helps us to study the Word of God. He helps us to know what it means. He helps us to know what God wants us to do. He helps us to know that God's plan for us. He helps us to know kind of what we need to be about, what we need to be doing. So that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. And Peter's just kind of backing that up again. He's backing up again. He's just giving them the gospel. As they said, don't preach. Now that he's in, on trial for preaching, he starts preaching to them. You know, so Peter's, you know, Peter's going, he's all in at this point in time about what God has for him, about what God wants him to do and what he has for him. So we continue on in the study of Acts um, chapter 5, verse 33 through 39. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill him. When they heard about what Peter just told them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care of what you are about to do with these men. Before these days, Thaddeus rose up, claiming to be somebody. The number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or if this undertaking is a man, it will fail. But if it is God, you would not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. All right, so Peter's preaching, and it is, I mean, he's just he's telling them, hey, you killed Jesus. God raised him from the dead. Now he has the power. He's doing all these things. He's the the, the forgiveness of sins, you know, repentance, all that things coming in from Jesus. We saw it. And y'all, y'all the ones that killed him. They become enraged. They became very, very angry with Peter and John. So they decide, I'm going to kill him. We're going to kill him. Remember, they've already killed Jesus. They killed him. They're, they're, they're about to kill Peter and John. And, and this, this Pharisee, who was well respected in town, well respected in, in, in the Sanhedrin, and Yamil, he, he spoke up and, and he said, 
Take them out for a minute. Take Peter and John, take the apostles out. Get them out of the room. We need to have a closed door session, closed door time, where we just talk. So he brings them, they takes them out, and, and Yamiel stands up and he says, listen, we've seen this before. There have been people that have claimed to be the Messiah before. And we know that when they die, their people end up dispersing and it goes away. He gives two examples here from in Acts chapter 5 that were happening. He said, let's, you know, that's what's going to happen. He said, if not, if this really is of God, then you can't stop it anyway. You may even be opposing God, which is exactly what they were doing. They just did not know it at the time. They did really didn't, still really didn't know it throughout their whole life. But if you're opposing what God is playing, you can't stop it anyway. You can't, you can't stop what God's got going. I think today in our society, we have a lot of people that want to stop what God's doing. We know outside the church, we know that, that there are people that, that, you know, in the media, you know, that, that do this, people that are maybe, in, you know, in, in high places with, with lots of resources that want to stop what God's doing. They can't. But also sometimes inside the church, we want to stop what God's doing. It makes us nervous. It makes us nervous that people are doing something that we don't maybe understand. Maybe not our cup of tea per se. Maybe not what we enjoy the most. So we want to stop it. We want to whoa, 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 back up a little bit now. So we we we're trying to we we're trying to kind of overthrow the plan that God has, and in that we're opposing what God wants done. We're opposing God. That's what Gabriel says. Hey, we gotta be careful. We don't want to oppose God here. We want to make sure that we're still walking with God. Remember, you know, this is the, the religious core. The, the, they want to make sure that they're walking with what God has for them. And he says, don't kill them. The, the killing them would, would be the worst thing that we could do. That would be the worst thing that we could do. So then we get to verse 40. Well, it says they were persuaded by him. He, 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 he convinced them not to kill them. And then verse 40. And when they would call the apostles and the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing in what they had counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. All right, you know, we, we see, remember now, as the Sanhedrin is, is living under Old Testament law. They're not under the grace of Jesus. They're not under what we know. They're living under the law, under the Old Testament as we know it. And they're allowed for several ways of punishment. One was, was to be beat, which is what they chose here. They, they took the advice of Gamma. They did not, did not kill them, did not give them death penalty. But instead, they had them beaten, they had them flogged. And then they went out and they told them, don't preach the name of Jesus. Remember, they're back in there because they were just told, don't preach in the name of Jesus. And they preached in the name of Jesus, so they brought them back. So they beat them, they flogged them. The flogging was there. It was meant to humiliate. It was meant to scar. It was meant to hurt. Um, the, you know, it was it was just punitive damage. It was not a, teaching them to do better. It was just to punish them. So they, they flogged them. They did all these things. And then they sent them on their way saying, don't preach anymore. They left there since so they left rejoicing because they fought, found them worthy to be beaten for the cause of Christ. We sometimes complain about every little thing. Everything that we do that, that doesn't go our way, well, look, it's just people trying to hold us down. And if it wasn't for them, then we could really do what God wants us to do. They felt they were rejoicing because they were kind of worthy to suffer dishonor for the name of Jesus. What do we do? What do we do when these things come our way? See what we do most of the time? You, you want to get, we want to get real for a second, and not live in our, our, our little church order, but get real. We go on Facebook and complain about what's happened for two reasons. One, we want to complain. And two, we think it makes us look good. They're not trying to look good. They're not trying to be, to be all this. They're just saying, here's what happened. And God has chosen us to be beaten because of who he is. How awesome is that? It says, and they went away and they preached the gospel. In house to house, in the temple, they preached that Christ is Jesus. The Christ is Jesus. He is who he said he was. He is the Messiah. 
people had the following. And they preached it. And they preached it. And they preached it. Every day in the temple and house to house, they preached that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Christ. He is the one who comes in repentance and gives us forgiveness of sins. That's what they preached. Today, we should be preaching the same thing. Jesus is who he says he is because that's what the New Testament's about. It's about Jesus. You know what the Old Testament's about? It's about Jesus. This whole thing is about him being the Messiah, him being who he says he is, forgiving our sins, giving us repentance, giving us grace, giving us mercy, giving us himself because he loves us. Are we preaching that? Are we preaching the love of Jesus? Are we preaching something else that goes on in society? Some hot topic for the day? Because hot topics change. Not ever say turn against what the Word of God says or stand on what the world says. I'm saying trust in Jesus, in the gospel. Preach the gospel and don't worry about all the other junk going on in our society. Yes, we live in it. Yes, we have to be a part of it. But our focus should be here, not on those things. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I just want to thank you for that. I want to thank you once again for each one that's watching this. God, I pray you would bless them. Have your hand on them. God, keep them safe as we go about our days. But God, if they don't know you, they would today. They would meet you, that that that, that God that loves us, that gives us that, that forgiveness of sins is awaiting for them. God, if they, if they, if they do know you, they, we, will be preaching your word, sharing what you've given us, living our life, make us worthy of being dishonored for you. God, I pray you just give us you, help us to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you what you need in front of others. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I, 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 as we continue on the study of Acts next week, um, um, Bray will be bringing um, the lesson, so I'm looking forward to that. And also, don't forget, small groups at 9 on campus, 10 o'clock for our worship service. There is no Wednesday night this week because of the Cadillac County Schools being out. But I hope you have a great week. I can't wait to see you again in church. Thanks. Mm -hmm.